So multi-step conversions are no harder than individual conversions. They're actually a lot easier, and it'll save you a lot more time when you're doing you're punching this stuff into the calculator. I notice a lot of people like to do lots and lots of steps, and the problem is that just wastes time. If you lose, let's say, 30 seconds per problem, and there are nine problems on the test, you wasted four and a half minutes of time just simply doing extra work, not actually thinking or anything like that. And you know what? I don't know about you, but I'm not the fastest test taker, and I think four and a half minutes is a lot of time that I could use to actually solve more problems or actually go back and double check what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is, sorry, I'm going to walk you through um, an example problem, uh, multi-step, so that you can see how everything is going to go all the way through. So how many atoms are in 10.1 grams of neon? So no matter what, it's a mathematical problem, start by writing your given. Okay. Now I'm going to set up my little conversion chart. Now notice that in this one, I actually use two lines. I do two conversions at one time, one long step. If you don't want to do it this way, and you want to do it as multiple steps and stop, calculate, stop, calculate, feel free if that's how you work better. So I've got grams. I'm starting with grams. So obviously grams from the periodic table have to go on the bottom. And neon weighs 20.18 grams. Remember, round to two places past the decimal for, for weights from the periodic table. I'm converting to moles, because remember, when in doubt, mole it out. So I put one mole on the top. Now, that's great. I can stop there, I can calculate, and I can come up with a new number. But why should I pick up a calculator and increase the chance of me making mistakes? So I'm going to keep going with my conversion. I know that one mole of any substance is equal to Avogadro's number in atoms. Now I'm dealing with atoms because neon is an element from the periodic table. It's not a compound. So it's not going to be molecules. Well. That's it. I did everything in one gigantic long conversion. So now how do I calculate this? I multiply everything on the top, I divide by everything on the bottom, and I get 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of neon. And that's it. It's that simple. That's, I mean, it's no harder than any of the other conversions we've done so far. It just has multiple steps that you have to think about. Now let's look at another one. How many molecules are there in 13.99 grams of phosphorus trichloride? OK. Does the process change when I've changed substances? No. So first thing you do, start by writing down your given. Set up your conversion. Now I want you to hopefully jump ahead of me here. So when in doubt, first step, mole it out. So put the weight from the periodic table that goes on the bottom. I'm going to convert into moles. One mole. Now that I'm in moles, again, I can stop, but I don't want to. I want to keep going. One mole goes on the bottom. And of course, I'm converting into molecules, so I have to again use Avogadro's number. Notice it doesn't change whether I deal with atoms or molecules. I can't tell you that enough. I'm going to keep saying that. So now I multiply everything on the top, divide by everything on the bottom, and I get 6.13 times 10 to the 22nd molecules. It's that simple. That's how easy a multi-step conversion can be. This is going to be huge. This multi-step conversion stuff will be gigantic when we deal with stoichiometry starting, next, uh, starting in the next unit. Okay. And that's it. That's all you need to know. If you want to go in the reverse, all your numbers would just flip places. Okay. So instead of multiplying by Avogadro's number, you would divide by Avogadro's number. Instead of dividing by the weight from the periodic table, you would multiply by the weight from the periodic table. It's really super simple to set up. Once you do it once, you'll see that everything just flips places when you do it the other time. The real key, and I can't stress this enough again to point this out, is notice that units go diagonal to each other. And that's so that they can cancel when they're done. Same thing here. This is how I never have to question where something is supposed to go. Because I always know whatever's in the top left has to go in the bottom right of the next one. And I just keep zigzagging like that so that my final answer ends up in the units that I wanted it. Okay?